welcome back. I'm absolutely thrilled to say that these three machines are now working. I'm going to carry on testing them for a couple of days, but I came in this morning and stupidly, well I brought the camera with me to show you what happens when you first come in. Perhaps I'll try and record it again tomorrow morning, but I've got it on manual focus so you can actually see anything. But when you come in they fade up. This fades up and plays you the tune and moves the carousel round to show you the the latest weather forecast. But the tune indicates whether the pressure is rising or falling, hence whether the weather is improving or getting worse. This fades up, the scribulator, erases yesterday's date and I was absolutely thrilled because as you know if you've been watching these videos I couldn't, it's because the PIR sensor was turned up too high, the sensitivity, so it kept setting itself off too early. But, sure enough, it wrote the day, date and month today, and the, this is the one that I've just recently finished programming, the chronological engine, and that faded up and set itself to the new time, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. So, whilst they're being checked and tested and everything else, I've got another climatic revelator to, bleh, bleh, climatic revelator to make for a customer in the USA. Very exciting. So I'm going to start that today. Now if you remember, in fact, I don't think I ever even mentioned it in public, so to speak, but I, when I was making the base for the, um, whatever it was, the chronological engine, I also made one, and look, it says on the back, Revelator. Handy instructions, that. So I made one while I was cutting all the beading and everything else. So that's lovely. I've got a base to be working on. Now, the next thing to decide what to do is what to make first. Hmm, I think because the heart of the machine is the carousel, as you can see, if you turn it around, there are five little scenes with a cunningly placed mirror and lens in the middle that tell you what the weather forecast is from stormy, well, go from nice and sunny all the way down to stormy. And each one is made up of several layers, as you can see. Excuse all the reflections, but you can see as you move, they move, which is lovely. It's exactly the look I wanted to get. Um, I think I'm going to make that first. Also, the outside of it is a joy to make because it's got these wooden panels and lens things that lets light through inside which the scenes are stored. So, come with me, if you will, while we consult the, uh, the CAD drawing. So many parts to choose from. Hundreds of parts, all different sizes and thicknesses, but hopefully all ending up looking roughly like that. So, these are the bits for the carousel and the bits to be cut out of the metallic card and things to make the five scenes from. I will get back to you when I've got some bits cut out. Well, I had lunch whilst cutting out these. And I've just been buying some extra bits that I need for the uh, chromatic revelator whilst these were cutting out. And of course, always take the opportunity when you're not looking at it to start a nice little fire that just roasts it and distorts it. So I'm having to cut out two more of them, but that's not the end of the world. I've been looking through my notes for the revelator and I'm absolutely thrilled. Look, copious isn't the word for it. There's tons of them on everything, the brass things I need to turn up, the spindles, absolutely everything. I was even thrilled to find that I'd made a note of the number, the Philips part number, for the little um, PR sensor with the connections. And then of course you discover, I wonder what these little holes are for. They're for the sweet, uh, the re they're for the magnets that tell the audience where this is. 70 p each. What a bargain. Or in fact, £1.60 each if you buy 10 for next day delivery like I just did. What a fool I've been. Never mind. I am very pleased with that. It fits together beautifully. It will be held square and everything else. I'm going to glue the bottoms in and the sides and bits and pieces on. 
and then if you see there's little holes here I'm going to countersink them and then there's a little prong that sits forward that I'm going to drill and tap an M3 hole in that's why there's a little dimple at the top just to help me line it up it's five millimeter thick three millimeter hole leaves one millimeter either side I like living on the edge let's get them done it the great thing is it then means that I can unscrew this assemble all the scenes put the lid on if I need to adjust something and take it apart so important to remember that not to assume that anything is perfect especially anything here and that you will at some point need to open things up and put things right if I try and tap this it's going to split the plastic so what I need to do is to clamp two very large pieces of wood either side of that and then tap it and these will stop it from splitting with a bit of luck as always I've dipped the tap in isopropyl alcohol to keep it cool and to stop the um, plastic from melting right a moment of truth this is number one four more to go let's see what's happened so far so good that looks like it's worked beautifully. Sometimes the isopropyl alcohol actually cracks the, the acrylic around the edges, which is very strange. You must look that up one day. But you can see there's a beautiful tapped hole, M3, that comes out the bottom. Good thing about having it coming out the bottom is because as you drill or cut the tap, the, the thread, um, extra bits of swarf and stuff can come out. I'm really pleased with that. Now then, with this assembly, Obviously the bearing, getting it to spin perfectly, is of paramount, tantamount, or some other mount of importance. So, the reason for having these three holes here and then there is I can line them up and they happen, happen, ho ho, are exactly the right size to put on the lathe chuck. It's not a very big lathe, but having them that means that I can grip them onto the lathe and then drill out the bearing hole. Now I said before, you can get the laser cutters very accurate, but it does cut slightly conical holes because the laser gets weaker as it goes through the material. Whereas a bearing has vertical sides. So I've cut this just small than I need it and I need to drill it out. I am currently drawing whew, another load of notes. I'm drilling it out on the lathe. So you can accept a beautiful little bearing. That's going to fit in there on the bottom right near the base and then with with bearings the idea is that you try and you have them as far apart as possible because then it stops any lateral movement. So I've got a little tur turret here we are, a little turret of um, sheets of M3 again I'm going to drill out the top one in the lathe and that's going to glue onto the inside of that bit You'll see where I'm going with this. Right, let's get some holes drilled on the lathe. There we are, like so. Let's not get to that drilled out. It's all coming dripping back. The first thing I do is to glue these four on, which don't have to be centred or anything really, as long as they're roughly right. So I'll get a drill bit and push it through the middle. Got them glued on. This is now mounted in here. We don't need it to spin. And then, in the chuck, there's that ring that's going to hold the support the bearing on the brass thing. So I can bring that up with some glue, and then try not to glue everything together. Glue that onto there, and hopefully it'll be centred. There we are, it's done. Here's the bearing on the back, there's the bearing on the front, and then if you spin it around, let's try and get it so you can see it. Oh, look at that. That isn't wobbling at all. So the gears will mesh perfectly all the way around. What a joy. I've just glued the vertical bits on, as always, with the beautiful V blocks. Absolutely perfect to make sure they're vertical and just sat standing on some um, metal spacer things. Now, let's see if the top, get it the right way around, actually does line up. Oh, look, dear friends. 
that's a joy that lines up absolutely perfectly so I've said in the past when I've tried to do this um, with the wrong thickness of 5mm and it's, oh, it's taken ages to fiddle and fart about with it but this is an absolute joy that fits perfectly and all the 3 mil holes will line up fabulous I'm so pleased with that next thing I need to glue clean these up I've just cut them out of engraving laminate because it's thinner and they're going to glue on the end of each of these pieces to hold the wooden panels in place right dog walked glue dry everything's looking beautiful let's make it look a little bit more beautiful with a coat of brass paint Lovely, what a fabulous finish. Love this paint. As always, go on about it. Plastic coat in the UK, metallic brass paint, and it sets really dry within about well at least 20 minutes. It's fantastic. Now I think it's time to make the turn up the central support shaft that holds the bearings in the middle of that. Lovely. So there we have it. The bearing just pushes on beautifully. Lovely. And as promised, good old RS, very next day before lunch, 10 or whatever I ordered, the little magnets. Can never have too many of them. Talking of which, it is lunchtime. And after lunch, I've got a fabulous part of the project. I printed this out this morning on the coated acetate. I had to sellotape onto a bit of paper to get the printer to accept it. But it's printed the cloud, the backgrounds for each scene, the six, because I noticed the roller in the printer wasn't happy about the acetate and had smudged it. So I've printed that one again there. But they've come out beautifully. I'll hold them up to the lights later and you can see, well, you get the idea anyway. They're not grey, they're made of lots and lots of little cr lines, crosses, cross hatching. So they look really lovely. And then, and this is why I love the laser cutter so much. One minute it's hacking out bits of 10mm thick wood or acrylic. The next, I mean, look at that. Isn't that incredible out of this beautiful metallic card? It is gorgeous, it's absolutely amazing. So for each of the weather types, the five different types of forecast, look how thin that is. Oh, fabulous. So we've got the, there at the back, then we've got the trees in different stages of being blown to pieces, and we've got the couple sitting in stages of getting blown to pieces. Looking forward to getting on with that. I was just starting to assemble it I remembered the magnets and I've obviously got the magnets so I've got one of the £1.90 per magnet magnets and it wouldn't fit in the slot because they've changed the size of the magnets I know the slot's the right size because the magnets used to fit these very same magnets what a pain so I needed to drill an extra little hole and the end of each slot, it's only a fraction, it's like half a millimetre, a millimetre, not very much. And then of course by doing that, I've managed to scratch some of the paint on the top. So now I'm going to have to respray that. Dog walked, magnets glued in, fabulous. I used to, you may wonder why there are five magnets, some of you may not. In the original one I had one magnet and some incredibly clever cunning code to save having five that didn't work. It never knew where it was and it was a completely ridiculous waste of time. Still live and learn. Hence the fact there's two reed, reed, reed switches rather underneath this as it turns. One obviously is in the middle, this is change and that means that the Arduino can tell which scene is being shown at that time. And then it's so much simpler, it just has to move to how many scenes past it and it knows exactly where the scene centres are so the motor can stop precisely. Keep it simple, stupid. There we are, the first two layers in. Isn't that fun? It's just, oh it's lovely. And 
there's a little piece where it says change underneath but also there's a piece of card that links the two together simply to stop light seeping out from the back that's used to illuminate the change and it's back to front because of the lens and the mirror right get on and do the other ones thankfully I've got a beautiful very detailed sheet with notes and instructions and the works to help me put this together look at this I've got them all together so we've got the three layers inside the trees and that printed out um, sun and um, clouds and things so you get a better idea now of each one which is great so exciting to have got this done now next thing is to get these outer panels done they are comprised from a lovely piece of balsa wood laser cut of course that's stained a lovely window that's made of three millimeter acrylic laser engraved with screw heads looks lovely that's going to sit on there and then into the hole the orifice we go one of these lovely five two millimeter thick windows now the great thing about putting this bit together is that it's one of those lovely gluing jobs you position it on the outside put a couple of drips of focus put a couple of drips of super glue just around the overhang that soaks under glues them into place so that's lovely once that's dry obviously you've got a rebate that you can just glue the other one in push it in a couple of drops around the edge look at that windows are going on lovely thing about these windows is that they just push in and they're held in place by the get out of the light by these little corners here isn't that lovely look at that and then as you can see I'm trying not to get my fingers all over it but if you hold that up to the light there we are you get a lovely little scene and it does look oh as always with steampunk machines the combination of metal particularly brass and wood and glass and things it just looks beautiful let's get the lid on got my kid gloves well cotton but I don't want to get fingerprints on this beautifully painted top well, hopefully oh look look at that oh what a joy it just looks so intriguing and it was really enjoyable trying to work out how you could get um, scenes, five scenes, that didn't cheat and use digital technology, actually existed and could be um, moved between them. Everything from a little stage with scenes that go up and down, like on the barometric prognosticator 2, um, but it just I suddenly realised carousels, the way forward, even though it's an old technology. Those lovely old carousel slide projectors. Right, let's get the spindle in so we can start spinning things. Now, before I start drilling holes and sticking in spindles, I need to cut out a slot. A slot, in fact, like that, just below the centre, into which I'm going to fit the two, a piece of error board with the two uh, reed switches on, one for the datum and one for the different scenes. So, and, and look, it even says drill with 5 8 flat bit I sharpened. Fabulous, five millimetres deep. All the information I need. Why is it always the last one you find? Been through all those. And there it is, the offending article. Ah, snap decision. Wasn't happy with the finish, so I've sanded it off and I'm going to apply another layer. But here it is. I drilled the hole and covered it in glue and hammered it in. Tapped it in. And underneath was a good top tip. If you don't want super glue to stick your piece of work, that bit, to your table, this bit, put a bit of packing tape on because super glue does not stick to it. So there's the first bearing on. Then we sit that on the first bearing and we put the next bearing on. Oh, now look, isn't that lovely? Whenever I get to this part of a project, I have to spend about 10 minutes watching things spinning around. I just love bearings, they're absolutely amazing things. And as you can see, this is not wobbling at all. So that means the gear that's gonna drive this is gonna stay, oh, I slowed it down then and it's still going. Right, next time, 
putting the mirror in so we can watch it from the front, getting cabinets built, possibly getting the gears. Oh, it's so exciting. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you're finding this enjoyable. Hope to see you next time. As always, please remember to subscribe and click the bell button. Um, and any questions, I'm always happy to answer in the comments. Thanks again.